Okay, uh, good morning everyone. So today, yesterday we have seen uh, the disinfection of water supply system. So how the disinfection is carried out for the drinking water by different methods of uh, disinfection. So today we are going to go for the last part of your unit 5 that is distribution system. So this particular distribution system is nothing but when all the process is carried out. So starting from the source, collection, then uh, calculating the demand of water supply for uh, per capita uh, demand and uh, next going for the process such as filtration, sedimentation, then making the hard water softening, then we are going to go for disinfection. After completing all these processes, we go for the distribution of this uh, drinking water. So, the distribution system is nothing but what we are going to say is the main purpose behind the distribution system is to deliver the water to consumer with appropriate quality, quantity and pressure. So, whenever the water has to be distributed to the public, we should see that a care has to be taken that appropriate quality means a good quality of water. Next, quantity means in a house if few people are there, say for example, a four member of uh, people are there minimum, then they should be sufficient with whatever the quantity of water we are going to provide. And if it is more also, the quantity that you are going to provide the water for that particular area should be sufficient enough. And the water pressure should be such a that, such way that <coughs> whatever the water you are distributing should reach each and everyone. So second point what we are going to say is the distribution system is used to, used to Describe collectively the facilities used to supply water from its source to the point of usage. Means we are going to see that the distribution system is mainly from the point of collection to the point of the usage. So these two points are going to be connected with some supply system using the pipe which we are going to call it as a distribution system. Next, requirement of good distribution system. How the distribution system or what distribution system we are going to call it as a good distribution system. First point what we are going to see in case of uh, this good distribution system is that water quality should not get deteriorated in the distribution of pipes. Means whenever the water from the uh, disinfection that is uh, from the filter source it gets disinfected and from the disinfection uh, after going to be treated by treated the water is going to reach the public. So during this process the pipelines will carry this water. So when the water moves through this pipeline whatever the deterioration is there, it should not contaminate the water that is present in the pipe. Second thing, it should be capable of supplying water at all intended places with sufficient pressure. Means, we are going to see that um, at ground level, if a house is at a ground level, we can see that the required pressure of water is less. If it is, if a house is situated at first floor or say second floor, or say third floor. So, if the number of floors are going to be increased, then the sufficient pressure is required to uh, pump the water to that particular level. So, that is why whenever the distribution system is provided for drinking purposes, then we see that it should be capable of supplying the water to offer sufficient pressure to all the required points. It should be capable of supplying the requisite amount of water during fire outbreak. So here we are going to take care that even during the uh, time of uh, the fire outbreak, the amount of water that has to be um, pumped to the area where it is situated. So it should be capable, means it, the pressure should be such sufficient enough that it should provide the requisite amount of water during fire outbreak. 
Then the last thing what we are going to say is the layout should be such that no consumer would be without water supply during the repair works of any section of the system. So uh, normally what happens whenever the water supply <coughs> uh, distribution system is seen. So there, is, there are certain chances that the system undergoes repair especially during the rainy season what we see due to the pressure of water. So there may be leakages or breakages of the pipe. So during that time if the repair works are going to be carried out then it is that care should be taken that no section of the system should be um, avoided without supplying the water. Means all the area should reach water even during the time of repair work. All the distribution pipes should be preferably laid on the opposite side of the sewer line or at least away from the sewer line. So normally what we do is uh, one side of the pavement we are going to uh, lay the sewer line system and the opposite side or away from the sewer line we are going to go for the laying up of this distribution system for the water supply scheme. So here it is the main intention behind that is the water uh, whichever we are going to provide for the drinking purpose should not be contaminated. It should be fairly watertight as to keep losses due to leakage to the minimum. So always the care should be taken that there should, should not be uh, more losses in the fittings because the leakage may be more if at all the fittings are loose. So the care is taken in such a way that the leakage will be very minimum. The distribution pipes are generally laid below the pavement and hence they generally follow the layout of the pavement. Normally what we do whenever a um, water supply scheme or a project is taken to any city or a place or a town it is going to be seen that always uh, the distribution pipelines are generally laid below the pavement because it follows the path of the pavement so that it will be easier to maintain the distribution system. Next thing we are going to see the classification of distribution system. So there are different classification of the distribution system depending upon the arrangement of the pipelines. So here we are going to see the main four uh, types of uh, distribution system that is dead end system, second one is the radial system and third is the grid system and the fourth one is the rain system. So these all differ in the way the pipelines are going to be laid in the town. So coming for the first system that is the dead end system. Here you can see in the figure um, all the pipes are going to end at one uh, at a particular point. So there is no continuation of that particular pipe. So this system is generally followed where there is no proper pattern of roads. So normally in olden system where there was no proper uh, road um, roads were there at that time they used to go for this dead end system used especially in the olden uh, old towns or cities. The main advantage of this uh, dead end system is it is normally relatively cheap Determ uh, the determination of discharge and pressure is easier due to less number of walls. Since we are using the number of walls are very less so these are the uh, walls which we are going to number of walls are very less we are going to say that the discharge and pressure is easier to calculate. Then the main disadvantage of this particular system is uh, due to end end of the ends due to the end of the ends stagnation of water occurs means here see that this pipeline will come right here. Okay. So this will cause the stagnation of the water. Next is the radial system. As the name itself indicates, the radial system means some stack 
some middle point will be there for the supply and from this main point all the pipes are going to be generated here or laid in the radial direction. So this system as the name itself indicates it is a, uh, the pipes are laid from one common point. The area is divided into number of zones. So think that this is one particular area and this area is divided into four numbers. Four numbers. So from this particular four numbers, what we are going to say is water is pumped into the distribution reservoir kept in the middle of each zone. So these points are called as the distribution reservoir which are going to be placed in the center of each zone. So the water will be pumped here and the supply pipes are laid radially towards the periphery. So for this area, the supply pipes are going to be laid towards the periphery of this region. So this is how the system behaves. Advantages of this particular radial system is service is quick. Normally, the number of um, uh, this thing, pumping systems will be more. So the service is quick. Calculation of pipe sizes and pressures is easy. Here we are going to see the calculation of pipe size as well as the pressure is very easy. Next, we are going to see the next system that is the grid iron system. It is suitable for cities with rectangular layout where the water mains and branches are laid in rectangles. So as the name itself indicates, wherever the rectangular layout is there, so such type of cities can utilize the system called the grid ion system. Here once again we are going to see M indicates the main pipe, B indicates the branch pipe, F indicates the sub mains and uh, whatever the dots we are going to see in the figure will indicate the cutoff walls. So here this particular uh, grid ion system is uh, Efficient or what we can say is more uh, preferable for the cities with a rectangular layout. So the advantages of grid system is water is kept in good circulation due to absence of dead ends. Since there are no dead ends for this particular uh, system, we can say that the water will be under continuous, continuous circulation. In case of breakdown in some section, some, some section, water is available from other direction. So wherever, if at all, say for example, if uh, uh, this, this particular area, the elaborate area, so what we are going to do, this point will be clearly separated, but the water supply for this area will be from the other end. Whatever the water comes from this area, from this direction, this is stopped, but the water from the other direction can enter. So there is no uh, problem of cutoff in the supply of the water supply. Next is disadvantage. So what are the disadvantages of this uh, grid ion system? Exact pipe size calculation is not possible due to presence of many walls in all branches. So as you can see in the figure, there are number of branches which are going to be uh, fit in each uh, pipeline. That is, it may be a main pipeline or it may be a branch pipeline or it may be a sub-main. That we are going to see that the number of walls are introduced. So this is uh, one big disadvantage that we can see in case of this grid system. So here fittings and fixtures are require, required are much and hence the losses of water pressure will be more. So the last system which we are going to see in case of uh, the distribution system is the ring system. So here the supply main is laid all along the peripheral roads and sub main branches out from the main. So the main branch supply main will be laid all along the periphery of the area means all throughout the area and the sub main branch out from this main branch. So the sub main will get it. Uh, collect, uh, this, uh, the connection between the uh, main and the sub main will be in such a way that they will be towards the peripheral of the area. This system also follows the grid ion system with the flow pattern similar in character to that of the 
dead end system. So this is what we can say is this is almost nearly similar to the grid ion system. So distribution of the size of pipes is easy. So here we can see that the, dis, uh, the determination of the size of uh, pipes, the size of the pipes uh, can be made very easy. So methods of water distribution. What, uh, what we are going to see in case of uh, these uh, methods of water distribution. For efficient distribution system, adequate water pressure required at various points. So wherever the efficiency is going to be seen in case of water system, that is uh, main water distribution system, the main thing is we have to see that adequate water pressure must be required. Depending upon the level of source, that is um, where, whether it is a river, the source may be a river or a well, topography of the area, the other local conditions, the water may be forced into the distribution system by following different ways. So from the source, the distribution should be in such a way that depending upon the source, we are going to force the water into the distribution system. So what are the different ways of uh, this method? So one thing, first one is a gravity system, second is the pumping system and the third one is combined gravity and pumping system. So both first and second together we are going to include in the third system. So coming for the first that is the gravity system. It is suitable when source of supply is at sufficient height. So especially this gravity system is uh, mainly suitable whenever the supply is at a sufficient height. Then most reliable and economical distribution system. So we can say this uh, gravity system as the most economical and uh, the, uh, the reliable one. The third point what we are going to see in case of gravity system is the water head available at the consumer is just a minimum required. So whatever the water head that is available at the uh, consumer level will be very minimum. The remaining head is consumed in the frictional and other losses. So the losses that are going to be um, uh, present in the water distribution system will be consumed in frictional and the fixture losses. So here we can see how the system of the gravity, uh, that is gravity system works. So this is the well, the water is pumped here, then the water testing and monitoring will be done here and later it is pumped to the overhead deck, overhead tank. So this is called as the reservoir or the storage tank. And from the storage tank it is connected, it is supplied to the water going to the different areas of the locality. Next is the pumping system. The second uh, system, distribution system which we are going to see is the pumping system. Here treated water is directly uh, forced into the distribution main. Means here there is no storage option. We are directly forcing the water into the storage, uh, this uh, main outlet. Also called pumping without storage system. This method is also called as the pumping without storage system. High lift pumps are required. Since there is no storage option, we require a high lift pump or this particular pumping system. If power supply fails, means if there is any cutoff in the electricity, complete stoppage of water supply is seen. Means there is no provision to supply the water further. The method is not generally used. Hence, what we are going to see, this particular system we are never using or generally it is not used. Third one is the combined gravity and pumping system. This system is generally commonly employed everywhere. So, it is the most common system. Treated water is pumped and stored in an elevated distribution reservoir. So here the water once treated will be stored in the elevated distribution reservoir as I showed you in the previous slide. Then supplies to consumer by action of gravity. So the consumer will get the water or the, get the supply of water by the process of gravity. 
the excess water during low demand periods gets stored in the reservoir and gets supplied during high demand period so normally what we see is whatever the excess water is there it is going to be stored in the reservoir and whenever the high demand periods will be there then that particular stored water can be utilized it is the most economical efficient and reliable system so uh, coming for the distribution reservoirs so normally these distribution reservoirs are also called as the service reservoirs or the storage reservoirs depending upon uh, the function of the distribution reservoirs they are going to be classified into different types these distribution reservoirs are also called as um the supplying reservoirs which store the treated water for supplying water during emergencies so emergencies in the sense we are going to see that it may be due to uh, fire hazards repairs etc and also to help in absorbing the hourly fluctuations in the non normal water demand so function of distribution reservoirs that we are going to see is to absorb the hourly variation in the demand second is to maintain constant pressure in the distribution main third one is water stored can be supplied during emergencies so whatever the water stored can be supplied during emergencies emergencies may be fire breakdown or any during repair works next location and height of the distribution of reservoirs this particular reservoir should be located as close as possible to the center of demand say for example um, a a town uh, for a town the reservoir should be in such a uh, location that it should be almost in the center of the demand so that it can uh, distribute the water evenly water level in the reservoir must be sufficient of uh, at elevation to permit gravity flow at an adequate pressure so in order to provide the gravity flow the uh, water whichever is present in the reservoir should be at sufficient elevation so here we are going to depending upon as i told you the type of reservoirs we are going to classify them into two types that is the surface reservoirs and the second one is the elevated reservoirs surface reservoirs what do you mean by surface reservoirs these also called as ground reservoirs they may be mostly circular or rectangular underground reservoirs are preferred especially when the size is large so whenever the size of the uh, storage tanks are larger then we prefer the underground reservoir system these reservoirs are constructed mainly on uh, on high natural ground and are usually made up of stones brick plain or reinforced cement concrete so the material that is going to be used for the construction of these reservoirs may be stone brick or plain or reinforced cement concrete the side walls are designed to take up the pressure of the water or however uh, these reservoirs are mainly designed to take the pressure of the water especially the side walls are designed to take the high pressure of the water and when the reservoir is full so whenever the reservoir is full the water will exert the pressure on the side of the walls so that is uh, um, considered in the design and whenever it is empty the earth pressure uh, will be uh, borne by the side wall elevated reservoir it is also referred to as an overhead tank are required at a distribution area which are not governed and controlled by the gravity system of the distribution so normally what we do is the this particular overhead tank are required at distribution area and they are governed and controlled by the gravity system of distribution these are rectangular circular or elliptical in shape uh, so there may be different shapes for this elevated reservoir so normally it may be rectangular circular or elliptical in nature if the topography of the town not suitable for under gravity the elevated tank or reservoir is used 
so if it uh, topography is not suitable for uh, underground or under gravity reservoirs then we go for elevated tanks or the reservoirs they are constructed where combined gravity and the pumping system of water distribution is adopted so especially this type of uh, reservoir we are going to uh, go for considering the distribution system where the combined gravity and the pump, pumping system is adopted these tanks may be steel or rcc so they may be even made up of steel or they may be of reinforced cement concrete so next uh, with this we are going to see that there is a certain uh, video which shows you the drinking water system uh, just uh, have a look of this video improving access to resources while preserving and replenishing those resources it's what we do at Veolia each day our distribution systems deliver drinking water from treatment plants to our customers' taps. These systems are designed to provide an uninterrupted supply of drinking water on demand, compliant with regulations, in line with customer expectations, and with minimal environmental impact. Here's how and why at a glance. Drinking water travels directly from treatment plants to households via pressurized mains. Depending on the topology, we can also pump water into high storage tanks so that the water flows through the system via gravity. The distribution network branches out towards each user's connection point. Special devices and equipment help to regulate water pressure according to fluctuating levels of consumption. Pipe diameter and material is adapted according to the local constraints and the characteristics of the water. The system is managed in small zones, which makes it easier to diagnose problems, do maintenance work, and accurately measure water distribution and consumption volumes. This is how we identify water losses. Leaks are found thanks to acoustic detection techniques or utilization of a tracer gas. At the base of buildings, pumping stations boost the water pressure so that it reaches every floor. We sample and analyze water throughout the network on a daily basis, making water one of the most closely monitored products made for human consumption. Measuring instruments, sensors and probes are installed at key locations throughout the system. Meters measure water consumption at each household. In the network, other meters and instruments provide real-time readings on the flow rate, pressure, vibration levels and water quality, and detect any leaks or changes in quality as soon as they occur. These instruments transmit data via communication systems. This is what makes drinking water systems smart. All the data converges at a centralized control center. These control centers combine and analyze the data to provide insight about operations or events. This way, analysts have a global view of the network in real time. This is how they can monitor water quality, improve the operation and maintenance of the system, and respond rapidly and transparently, keeping authorities and consumers in the loop. By ensuring a continuous supply of water, while constantly optimizing our network's performance, our solutions are a long-term guarantee of operational efficiency for cities and for customers, the assurance of high-quality yet affordable water. So this is uh, regarding the uh, drinking water distribution system that we can call it as a smart water supply system. So next uh, uh, we can have a video on clean water along a journey with the source to our tap. How the water is coming from the source to our tap, we are going to see the small journey. This is one more uh, animated video, just you can have a look here. We open the faucet and it's always there, clean, safe and abundant. Water, the essence of life. <gasps> we need it every day, but we often forget that safe drinking water starts way before it gets to our tap. Before the pipes that lead to our home, even before the complicated process of treatment and disinfection that makes raw water drinkable, it starts here at the source. In Pennsylvania, our source water can be from surface water, like our rivers, lakes, and streams. 
or groundwater, the aquifers that lie beneath the earth. Public water suppliers tap into these sources to provide us with our drinking water. No matter where our water comes from, it's affected by what happens on the land around it. As we develop the landscape, we create more impervious surfaces and change the natural water cycle. When it rains, water can no longer seep into the ground. Instead, it travels as runoff, picking up pollutants on its way to rivers and streams. We all contribute to the contamination of our water. Contamination of our source water supplies can cause disease and become very costly to clean. And sometimes that contaminated water might be impossible to clean and the source must be abandoned. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be this way. We can prevent contamination from happening. We can use best management practices on farms and industrial sites. We can manage runoff from roofs and driveways by naturalizing our yards. We can protect green space and create buffer zones along rivers and streams. We can put zoning controls and stormwater regulations in place. Protecting water resources sustains local wildlife, attracts businesses, promotes tourism, and assures a more affordable quality of life for our families and future generations. Clean water benefits all of us. Click here to get started. So, with this, we are coming to the end of the chapter, that is disinfection and 